Hello and welcome to Emmanuel Church of the Deaf here in Rochester, New York. I am Father Ray Fleming. And I am Deacon Pat Graybill. Known as Deacon Pat. We welcome you in celebrating God's wonderful love. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Amen. In preparing ourselves for today's Mass, we first turn to God and ask that he may support us through his mercy. Lord, we try our best to trust you fully. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, you love us so that you were willing to die on the cross. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, you support us continuously. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Now, let us pray. O oh God, who cause the minds of the faithful to unite in a single purpose, grant your people to love what you command and to desire what you promise. That amid the uncertainties of this world, our hearts may be fixed on that place where true gladness is found. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. First reading is from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord to Shebna, master of the palace, I will thrust you from your office and pull you down from your station. On that day I will summon my servant, Eliakim, son of Hilkiah, I will clothe him with your robe and gird him with your sash and give over to him your authority. He shall be a father to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and to the house of Judah. I will place the key of the house of David on Eliakim's shoulder. When he opens, no one shall shut. When he shuts, no one shall open. I will fix him like a peg in a sure spot to be a place of honor for his family. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial song is, Lord, your love is eternal. 
Do not forsake the work of your hands. Join me. Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with all my heart, for you have heard the words of my mouth. In the presence of the angels I will sing your praise. I will worship at your holy temple. Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. I will give thanks to your name because of your kindness and your truth. When I called, you answered me. You built up strength within me. Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. The Lord is exalted, yet the lowly he sees, and the proud he knows from afar. Your kindness, O Lord, endures forever. Forsake not the work of your hands. Lord, your love is eternal. Do not forsake the work of your hands. Our second reading is from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How inscrutable are his judgments, and how unsearchable his ways. For who has known the mind the Lord, or who has been his counsel, or who has given the Lord anything that he may be repaid? For from him and through him and for him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Join me. Alleluia. Alleluia. You are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. Alleluia. Alleluia. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus went into the region 
of Caesarea Philippi. And he asked his disciples, Who do people say that the Son of Man is? They replied, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah. Oh, Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. He said to them, But who do you? say that I am. Simon Peter said in reply, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus said to him in reply, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my heavenly Father. And so I say to you, you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of the netherworld shall not prevail against it. I will give you the keys to the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Then he strictly ordered his disciples to tell no one that he was the Christ. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus asked that question over 2,000 years ago. But the same question holds importance today. Jesus asks me and asks you, Who do you say that I am? Who am I to you? Peter answered this question. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. Jesus applauded Peter's answer and then ordered the disciples to keep it a secret, forbidding them to tell anyone. I'm always puzzled. I'm happy to preach the good news. But at this point in the gospel, it's still unclear what the word Christ means. However, there are four possible definitions. Some people wanted Christ to mean a military ruler who would conquer and expel the Romans. Others reminisced about the good old days, longing for Christ to become like their former king, David, and defeat all of their enemies. However, they forgot that David was not a particularly great king. 
He lost everything because he did not follow God's plan. A third fraction wanted Christ to distribute milk and honey as the biblical well, the Old Testament had promised. Jesus is indeed Christ, but his interpretation of the word Christ was different. For Jesus, Christ meant servant. This concept of servitude flies in the face of the former three definitions. Well, the first definition supposed that Christ would be a military ruler, conquering the Romans with arrows and spears and chariots. Jesus' weapon was love. Again, this concept contradicted all people's assumptions. Interestingly, in today's second reading from Paul's letter to the church in Rome, Paul asks, Who can counsel God? Most of us do that all the time. We counsel God on a variety of matters because we're under the oppression that we know best. Peter did the same. He was just like us. He wanted Jesus to follow his laundry list of requests. Later, Jesus reprimanded him, telling Peter his duty was not to counsel him, but to get behind and follow him. That advice remains the same for us today. Instead of advising God on what we need, our gift is that we already have Jesus, our Savior, our Christ. So it is our duty to fall in line behind him and follow where he leads. I'd like to conclude today's homily with a quote from John Lewis, the late congressman who passed a few weeks back. He had said, when you pray, move your feet. That means that we must follow through with our prayers by following Jesus and walking in action. For instance, we can walk in a few weeks to vote in order to help our country become a better place. We can move our feet in some instances to work the pedals and drive rather than walk to help those in need of our support. Sometimes we need to move our feet to Interrupt, to disrupt people's lives. The point is, our prayers are not counseling God. Rather, our prayers are following Jesus. And we can't follow him if we're sitting. Our religion is not about sitting. It's about following. Today, as before, Jesus calls us to come follow him and serve each other by showing love and compassion. Please join me in this call. Amen.
Now let us pray. We pray for the church that it would follow Jesus and become his hospital here on earth so that people can heal to become better people to develop their faith. May our church continue to be God's hospital. We pray to the Lord. Lord, receive our prayer. For the Democratic National Convention that just took place, that they focus on reuniting America. As various speakers emphasized, through inclusion, as well as love, support for the poor, Black Lives Matter, and supporting those who have been marginalized so that we may live in one communion of the kingdom of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, receive our prayer. Soon, the Republican National Convention will convene. In light of this, we pray that they may find ways to show love and heedance of Jesus' plan of including everyone, excluding no one, welcoming all, and doing God's will here on earth in preparation for heaven. That Republicans and Democrats may work together for justice and peace throughout the U.S. and the world. We pray to the Lord. Lord, receive our prayer. For our church, that we not sit idly by, but move our feet in support of one another. For love's sake, that peace and justice may happen. We pray to the Lord. Lord, receive our prayer. We pray for all beloved friends, relatives, and family now deceased, that they may rest in peace. We thank God for those who came before us and pray that our descendants similarly enter God's communion through his love. We pray to the Lord. Lord, receive our prayer. For those people who are in depression in the face of continued quarantine and isolation, may they find hope by reaching out to each other for support. We pray to the Lord. Lord, receive our prayer. for all the prayers that we hold in silence in our hearts, for all our intentions spoken and unspoken. God, may you answer our prayers as you cherish and love us. And may you help us similarly cherish and love one another in recognition that we are all your children.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received this bread and wine we offer you. Clear of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us our spiritual drink and the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good, and for the good of all his holy church. O Lord, who gain for yourself a people by adoption through the one sacrifice offered once and for all. Bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. It is right to give thanks to the Lord. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ, our Lord. His death we celebrate in love. His resurrection we confess with living faith. And his coming in glory we await with unwavering hope. And so with all the angels, and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he first took the bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of it, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper had ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant. which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this 
in memory of me. Now, we proclaim the mystery of our faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that by partaking of the body and blood of Christ, you may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world, and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Salvatore, our Bishop, and all those who serve your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy, welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life, and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now let us pray in the way that our Savior, Lord Jesus Christ, has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, now and forever. Amen. May the peace of Christ be with you all, and with your spirit. Christ's peace is here. Let us share with each other a sign of Christ's peace by signing I love you or thinking of and praying for each other because we're currently not in the same room. Ray, I love you. Pat, same. I love you. Peace to you. Also, to those who support and help make this video mass, including Isaiah, the interpreter, the lectors, peace be with all of you. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. 
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold, the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. I will be receiving the Eucharist on behalf of all of us. Well, Pat leads us in a prayer of spiritual communion. Join me. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Complete within us, O Lord, we pray, the healing work of your mercy, and graciously perfect and sustain us, so that in all things we may please you. Through Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless us. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go forth with peace in your hearts and remember to share God's love wherever you may go. Thanks be to God.